Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I bring greetings from the so-called God's own country. And we are very glad that we all could come here to this Emmaus Bible College to attend the International Brethren Training Institutions uh, consultation and training conference. I think we have benef benefited so much through the sessions and especially from various workshops. Uh, let us take these new principles which we learn on the basis of the Word of God to our respective places for the smooth functioning of the theological training institutions we have in our place. Whenever we end a meeting in India, normally we speak on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 3, we read the words from our Lord. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So this morning, I would like to draw your attention to the responsibility of believers to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We know that our Lord is coming, and in view of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, what should be our responsibilities? First of all, a believer should wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we read in 1 Corinthians 1 7, the words from Apostle Paul so that you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also we find in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So in 1 Peter chapter 4, 10, we see the statement of Apostle Peter, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. See, first of all, first of all, we we read the verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, the statement from Paul, you are not lacking in any gift, awaiting eagerly the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, in a sense we have the responsibility to use the spiritual gift God has given to us. I know that we all are here representing the theological institutions and we I think most of us are having the gift of teaching. So when God has given us the responsibility to teach his word, we should see that we take this responsibility and we should be faithful in teaching the word of God wherever we are placed. So let us wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also when we, when we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus, let us use the spiritual gifts God has given to each one of us. Secondly, when we think about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, we, when we read Paul's statement in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, he says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them that also allow his appearing. So Paul says that I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have run my race. And therefore I am going to receive a crown of righteousness. Then he says that not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. 
do we love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? See, we have come here. We plan for several things. We have planned for the future consultation. At the same time, let me ask you the question, do you really love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? See, let me make a statement. See, more than the love we have for the coming of the Lord, the Lord Jesus, he has the love for coming for the assembly. See, when we look into the book of Revelation, chapter 22, three times we see the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 7, he says, Behold, I am coming quickly. So Jesus Christ is expressing his desire that I am coming quickly. So in response to that statement of Lord Jesus Christ, we do not see any positive comment from Apostle John. Then in verse 12 we read, Behold, I am coming quickly. Then also John is silent. Then again in verse 20 Jesus says, He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. The third time when Jesus made the statement, we see the response from Apostle John, yes, amen, come Lord Jesus. You see the statement, Jesus said three times, I am coming quickly, I am coming quickly, I am coming quickly. What was the response from John? Come Lord Jesus. See, he did not say, Lord, you come quickly. Jesus said, I am coming quickly. But the response was, you know, it was not that much, you know, expressive. He said, come Lord Jesus. See, we have so many plans. And our desire is that the Lord should come only after fulfilling those plans we have. So we have the next consultation. We have next IBM conference in Rome. So our desire is that we want to, you know, fulfill all those things. We want to accomplish the desires we have in relation to our ministry, in relation to our organization. And after that, maybe after my time, Lord, we wait and then you come. So let me say that more than the desire we have for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord has the desire to come for the assembly Come for the believers. So at least, you know, we should be like John. You know, he is the representative of each one of us. At least, you know, we should be faithful in saying that, Amen, come Lord Jesus. So let us love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, a third responsibility expected from a believer is that he should purify himself. Now we see the statement from uh, 1 John chapter 3. Beloved, now we are children of God and it, is, it has not appeared as said what we will be. We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. Then he says, and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. So when we eagerly wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, you now it is expected from us that we should live a holy life. We know the statement from the Lord stated in 1 Peter chapter 1. Be ye holy because I am holy. We know positionally we are the saints. But practical, progressive sanctification is necessary as we live in this society, so God wants us to purify ourselves when we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Once a seminary professor in India, he was smoking. So a believer from his assembly, he saw that and he was shocked. Now by seeing the action of a seminary professor, so that believer, you know, he questioned him. You are a Bible teacher. You're supposed to be an example for the believers. Then why do you smoke? You know what he said? He said, Bible college teaching is my profession. See, many people are in the teaching ministry thinking that this is a profession. Just like 
working in an IT field or in a hospital, they think that this is a better job. And I know that in United States of America, MD is a professional degree. So when we are here in the presence of the Lord, let us just examine ourselves. Am I here because this is my profession? Or am I here because this is the responsibility God has given me to teach the word of God? To explain the biblical principles to the students who are coming to me. To go to the assemblies and teach the word of God. So we should, you know, leave, we should be an example for what we are preaching. So when I, when I teach in you know, homiletics. So I emphasize this fact to the students. Now when you preach something, you should see that you... You, you fulfill that in your personal life. If you don't practice so far, at least you have the mind that, Lord, from this moment, I am ready, I am willing to practice what I am preaching. So as we eagerly wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us live a sanctified life. Fourthly, When we wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have the responsibility to fulfill the Great Commission. See, in the book of Revelation chapter 5, we see a heavenly scene. The four living creatures and the 24 elders, they are worshipping the Lord. After the rapture of the church, we see a heavenly scene in which they worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So when they worship the Lord, what he says, you purchased the people from every nation, from every language, from every tribe, and from every race. That means after the rapture of the church, or at the time of the rapture of the church, the gospel is presented to all nations and to all languages, to all people groups. Let me say that if we are faithfully looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, then we have the responsibility to speed up the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the gospel should reach to all over the nations. You know, that is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to observe you know, what I have commanded to you. So he has given us the responsibility to make disciples. So what we have to do in making disciples? So Jesus Christ expressed that by using three participles. He said by going, you should make disciples. By baptizing, you should make disciples. And by teaching, you should make disciples. So the Great Commission, the, the final words of our Lord Jesus Christ gave to his disciples is that we have the responsibility to make disciples. First, we have to go with the gospel. Secondly, we have to baptize the people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And thirdly, to them, we have the responsibility to teach what the Lord Jesus Christ really commanded. You know what our Lord commanded? was really understood by the disciples. They went around and preached the gospel. When we read the Acts, it is clearly understood. Whenever the people believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they gave them the baptism. Then they taught. And that teaching we have in the Bible in 21 epistles from Romans to Jude. So we are here you know, the teachers from different countries, the Bible teachers from different institutions, and we are, in a sense, fulfilling the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, let us speed up the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ by going with the gospel, by baptizing the believers, by teaching the teaching, the word, the commandment that was given by the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we 
eagerly wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us examine ourselves. Am I really waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ? If so, I have the responsibility to use the spiritual gifts, the gift of teaching God has given me in the place wherever he has placed me. Secondly, I have the responsibility to love the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, I have the responsibility to purify myself, live a sanctified and exemplary life in the midst of the society. And finally, speed up the coming of the Lord Jesus by fulfilling great commission. When God was talking to Gideon, he said, go with this might. So I am giving you the strength. With this strength you go. So we have attended this consultation training program. The Lord's servant, they spoke from the word of God. In various sessions, we have, you know, the good instructions and, you know, the insights on the basis of the word of God. So let us take these principles and go to different fields, to different institutions and with one mind of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us work for him. Let us faithfully work for him. Let us live an exemplary life. May God's name be glorified.